What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 joint tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create a joint with a motion link in order to animate a nut that turns and moves up and down a bolt inside of Fusion 360. So this is continuing our series on the different kinds of joints inside of Fusion 360. We, I will uh, make sure to link to the playlist in the notes down below if you want to watch the other videos. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the McMaster car um, component library and we're going to download a bolt and a nut. So we don't have to worry about modeling those out because we have access to this whole library. And uh, in this case, we're gonna go in and we're gonna select a hex head um, screw or hex head nut. And we're gonna do that quarter inch dash 20. And we'll go ahead and say this is gonna be a two inch fully threaded. So we'll just go to our product detail and download this down below. And I will link to a video down below on bringing McMaster car components in. Um, but this is really easy. It'll just drop this in here and you don't have to model all of this out. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the nut. So for the nut, we're just gonna click on a nut. We're gonna bring a hex head nut in or a hex nut in. And there we go. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it just because it's easier for me, is I'm just gonna rotate this up 90 degrees and move it off to the side like this. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on capture position. And so now that we have these two components in here, what we wanna do is we wanna create a joint between them. So we wanna define the movement between or we wanted to find a joint between this object and this object. So we want to tie them together to create movement. So in order to do that, we're going to go up to this option for joint. What we want to do is we want to add a joint. So you can also find it by clicking on the assemble button and clicking on joint right here. You can see how what this asks you for is it asks you for two components. So in this case, we want to add this nut as a component and this bolt as a component. And you can see how when you mouse over these various faces, what it's doing is it's giving you a little marker. Well, the marker is going to ind indicate the basis of the joint. So for example, we don't want this to be on the top here and then on the face here because what it would do is it would align these little markers together. So it would turn this object. What we want instead is we want to align um, two coplanar markers. And so that's really easy over here because you could just click on the face. It's a little harder on the front side because you can see how when you mouse over this, it doesn't really give you the inference in the middle of this object that you want because we basically want to set a point right in the middle of this hole and then align it with this face. And so what we can do though, is we can mouse over something that has an inference point in the middle. So you can see how when I mouse over this flat piece, I get an inference point showing me where the center of this circle is. Well, what I can do is I can hold the control key and that'll lock this inference. So you can see how now the inference is locked to this face and I can move my mouse over any of these points in order to set them as my marker. So in this case, I wanna click on the center point. And you can see how this turns gray, indicating that we've selected it as a component. Well then, we just wanna do the same thing where we're gonna click right here on this object as well. And you can see how this spins this around 180 degrees. Um, if you don't want it to do that, you can just uh, change this angle to zero. Um, but what we've done is we've basically told this that we wanted to find a joint between that point and that point. So if I click play, this is gonna move up and down. However, we don't want a slider joint in here. What we want instead is we want a cylindrical joint. And the reason for that is because the cylindrical joint, you can define both you can define both a value for how far this will slide. You can also define a value for this being something that spins. So if I click play, for example, you can see how this moves up and down and it's both spinning and also moving along this axis. Then we're just going to click on the button for OK. And so what we've done is we've defined a joint between this object and this object. And so there's two problems in here. The first is right now, if I click and drag this around, this whole thing is just gonna kind of move with it. That's because we haven't told Fusion 360 that something needs to not move. So in this case, to simulate this movement, we wanna make sure this bolt doesn't move. So we can go ahead and we can, in order to do that, we can right click on this object inside of your browser and click on the button for ground. As soon as we ground something, and we're gonna go ahead and click capture position to capture our new position. But as soon as you ground something, then when you move an object like this, you can see how your bolt 
isn't moving. So the only thing it's moving is the other part of your joint. And you can see how you can spin this right here as well as move it along this axis. However, we've got another problem which is I can move this as far as I want to, which isn't realistic. So what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to give it a limit. So in order to give it a limit, we're just gonna go into this joint right here. And there's a little button that says edit joint limits. Well, if you click on that, then it's going to allow us to give a joint limit for both the rotation as well as the slide. Well, in this case, we wanna set limits for the slide so that it only slides from here to here. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on this button right here to set our minimum. And we can just click and drag this little flag right here. And we're gonna set our minimum to negative two in this case. And then our maximum is gonna be another flag that we can click and drag down here. And so we're gonna set our maximum to something like negative 0.25. And then if we click animate, you can see how this shows us that the minimum and maximum for this object are those two points that we set. So now if we click okay, I can spin this as much as I want, but then I can click and drag this and it'll only go this far. So and notice that we're getting some kind of crazy spinning in here. We're gonna affect that in a second. Um, but you can see how now this is an accurate depiction of how far this joint will allow this to go. And so one other thing we need to do is we need to define this so that the rotation inside of here is tied to the distance that this goes. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna create what's known as a motion link. And so what a motion link is going to do is that's gonna tie the rotation to the distance inside of this object. So if I was to click on the button for assemble, there's an option for motion link. And it's gonna ask us if we wanna capture a new position. I'm gonna go ahead and say sure. And it's gonna ask us to select the joint. Well, in this case, the joint that we're gonna select is just the one that we've already put in here. And so right now this is giving us a drop down that's showing us the option for slide or rotate. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna tie those two things together. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on this button right here for link with same joint. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna link the movement of your slide to your rotation. And so basically what this is gonna allow us to do is this is gonna allow us to tell this at what distance this is turned 360 degrees. So for example, if I wanted this to spin faster, I would tell this that I want this to turn 365 degree, or 360 degrees in 0.25 inches. So you can see how when I do that, this object is spinning a lot more then, for example, if I was to tell it that I only want it to turn 360 degrees in two inches. So you can see how if we do that, this is gonna spin a lot slower. And so I'm actually going to set this back to one inch. I think that worked pretty well. But basically what this has done is this has now said, okay, in this joint, when this moves along this face right here, um, this needs to turn a certain number of degrees. So if we were to click OK now, and so you can see how now if I was to go in here and click on this, I can't just drag it from end to end like I could before. What you need to do is you need to turn it. And you can see how this moves as we turn it because we've linked the spin of this object to the limits of, um, or to the length of this joint. And so you could adjust this. So for example, if you wanted to go into your motion link, um, you could set this, you could change that distance. So if I was to click on, or if I was to set this distance to 0.5 and then click okay, you can see how this is gonna spin a lot more times than it was before. So, and you could get as in depth on this as you wanted to, I guess. You could go in here and calculate the actual distance that this would travel as you spin it, though I don't really see the benefit, but you definitely could. So you can use this to link the movement um, along this axis right here with the spin of this object and simulate the real world limits of this object. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. We're gonna be continuing the series on joints and creating other kinds of things as well in future videos. But if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.